All right, hang on. Let me get my hair out of my face. There's only one way to spell Papa Pig, and that's S U C C E S S. Man, I, well, well, hold on. Wait. This new album. It's gonna be our Tom Sawyer. Oh fuck, no. I... Go. This new album. This is gonna be our Huckleberry Finn. It's gonna be our Titanic. Raised album ever made. That's what they're gonna say. I'm gonna be the Rachel Ray of music. That's for sure. Go. Look at that. James Bond would be asking me for five tips. Mm. Mm. Muhammad Ali be like, please show me that. <clears throat> Piss on feet is like day, night, and everything in between. It's everything. The sun, the moon, the stars. Hell, it's every satellite floating around. <clears throat> RuPaul is my mother in law. The moon is made of cheese. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. I want to go into the Alaskan wilderness. Fight wolves with my bare hands. That's kind of how piss on feet is. It's like a wolf attack with your bare hands. And you grab it and you just shake it. And you put it straight to the ground. And then you look up and you say to yourself, We're the greatest band of all time. Remember that. Go. Dolphins in a cove of desire. I know that you will be with me again. It's time to set fires to polar bear eyes. Dance. I want you to dance with the sunflowers But don't be too friendly Because they'll eat your eyes out Sunflowers are the devil Devil, yeah! Sunflowers are the devil Sunflowers aren't your friends. I know. That's my special kid. I. It is. This is the biggest supporter of Piss on Feet right here. He's been to all our rehearsals. Listening to all the songs. Haven't you, kid? Yeah. Yeah. I know. He's actually one of the reasons why this next album is happening. He's, he's a communist. Um, and emo is a form of communism. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, I know. Red power. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, ah! 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 Oh, God! Ah! Oh, he's vicious! He is a vicious dictator! Oh, you're, oh my gosh! This is an instrument. I play this when I'm on stage and recording. This is also an instrument. A finely tuned instrument. I use my tuner to make sure that my finely tuned instrument is producing at 100%. Perfect.
fifth was a little flat. You can do it again. Just saying that, you know, you, you don't want to sing out of tune. You do not speak to me like that. That, that was perfect. I'm, I'm sorry I doubted you before. Yeah, you should. You should feel terrible. I'm just going to keep it rolling, so... Okay. Piss on feet's like a minotaur. You got the body of a man, sculpted, just as God's intended. But the head of a, a bull, his nose pierced, right there. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. Let me think. Let me think this one through. Piss on feet's like a succubus. We take all the the genius and put it into one album. When you hear it, it takes your your life, your life force, and just pulls it right out of you. Most people think succubus is a bad thing. Not when you're listening to the greatest band ever recorded in the history of humankind. I think Piss on Feet's kind of like Poseidon. It's like we're swimming in a, an ocean of, of self-doubt and fear. But when we record, when we make that album, it's like the great hand of Zeus reaching down and touching us. And saying, it's okay. It's okay. Is there anything else you want to do? You ready? Mm -hmm. I do consider myself like Beowulf. I fight all the demons that come into the village, like Rendell. The demons being bad music. Music that clouds. And discourages. Our music uplifts. When there are bands out there that squash a village, will take the people by the, their little tiny bodies, bite off their heads, and then spit them right across, hitting a little boy in the face. I come with my sore bear and take down that creature. Take him straight to the ground. I cut off his head. I raise it. And all the village people come up to me and cheer. That is what I do when I am making music. What do you do to all the, uh, the village women that, that um, applaud your, your courage and bravery? I have sex. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> We'll do it again. <laughs> Straight face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Straight, I, dead I pan. Almost did, dead I pan. almost did it. Almost did it. <laughs> what do you do to the village ladies that congratulate you for your courage and bravery? Turn them into my concubine. What does that mean? Sex lady. Alright, tell me a little bit about the formation of the band. First of all, what is the band and who are you in it? And then a little bit about uh, the formation of the band. Well, I'm Alex Devinny Stoner, aka Papa Pig, Piss on Feet. The formation of the band is the summer of 2001. We started writing some songs down, started recording them. It took about a month and a half for our first album to be completed. Okay, how did the. Um how was the general response of the first CD? It was good. Um, we sold 25 copies in the first half an hour. Um, it was really received well by the... Uh, shit. It was really received well by the people. They really enjoyed it. They liked our, our use of, of instruments 
and our melodic voices. Okay. What was the first question? <laughs> Uh, we basically got right back into the studio after the first album had been released. We, uh, we started picking up some new ways of writing. We started using lots of rhymes and uh, we kind of coined our own genre of Dr. Seuss metal. Um, I think probably one of the best things that, that happened coming out of the uh, second CD was our first show. The urination celebration. It was really the culmination of of all of our hard work and dedication to our music. Did I that miss? What was the um, response to the second CD uh, compared to the first one? It was even bigger than before. Um, we realized that we had um, really started to get into our stride of really making some good music. Um, our CD sales tripled in the first day that we had, than we had in our first album, um, and it was really received well. You should write underneath. Okay, with the third CD, there was extensive promoting for the CD, but it was not released until two years later. Can you tell us a little bit about the recording and, um how that was received as well. The recording was a little bit more painstaking. Um, we really wanted to get in there and make a, a, an exceptional album. Every time you make an album, you want it to be better than the last. And so we really thought we needed to take some time and really write out our stuff, really get down to what we thought we were as a band. Um, and it really paid off because we had uh, two number one hits in the entire country on mp3.com, one in uh, folklore and one in horror. Um, and we had several other songs in different genres, very high on the list. And when we released the third album, it was a monsoon of happy vibes, people loved it, people singing the lyrics to us as we were walking around. and. It really made us feel good because when, when you write something, you know, it, it's your poetry. And when somebody quotes your poetry, it just takes your breath away. Now, this third CD did not come without controversy. Tell us a little bit about the song Jesus Stick. I was afraid you were going to ask about that one. Um, <clears throat> it was maybe a darker time in the band. Um, we were really trying to struggle to, to find where our muse was and we kind of reached out to try to find something that would really give us our musical inspiration. Unfortunately, um, trying to find um, inspiration from religion and mocking it, those two things don't usually add up well. Um, so that song in particular wasn't quite received as well as others. Now, do you think the fact that you recorded this song on Easter would um, pretty much guarantee your spot into hell? <laughs> yes. Oh, shit, what was the first part of that question? Damn it. Um, even with the controversy of Jesus Stick, our, our third album ended up selling over 150 copies, um, our highest selling album to date. Um, we went a little bit of a different direction with that CD. We, we went to more of the, the rap rock, um, because it was, you know, it was kind of getting at the tail end of the big rap rock movement, but we really wanted to make an album that kind of encompassed all of the fabulous music that was made during that era. Um, so, we really wanted to encompass all of the great musicians and artists that 
that created rap rock, and we really wanted to kind of pay tribute to that uh, on our third CD. We really wanted to show how, you know, poets such as Fred Durst uh, really can open up the horizons to, to young artists such as us. So after the um, gross popularity of uh, Pissantit's Third Time is a Charm, your third CD, um, the band promised a new CD in 2006. It is now 2008, and there's no new CD. Not even a new song. Should the fans be worried? You never should be worried when musicians get together and are trying to make something beautiful. We've been working very hard. We've been extensively researching our, our demographic, which has changed. Um, we're, we're really trying to appeal to the new crowd, the, what is called the emo movement. We're really trying to appeal to those people and while also not pushing away our old fans, the ones that are increasingly gaining age. Okay, so next we're going to talk a little bit about um, the um, what what um, what hopes you have for this this new CD and um, how you think it's going to be different or um, can I say can I just look into the camera and be like world domination? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I actually now that you've said that I don't plan on hearing any answer but that one. Okay. So, with this new album in the works, what is your main goal for this new CD? World domination. Okay. Now, Piss on Feet has always had a reputation of planning their albums ahead of time. With you working on your fourth CD. What are you planning for the fifth or the sixth? We've got a lot of ideas. Um, one is something that will also seal our doom, um, which is a Christian rock album with other religions mixed in. Um, but it'll be a double album because the first one will be much more religious. Uh, but our second album will be chronicling our descent into hell. We also have had some ideas of remaking some of the finest songs in all of music. And that one's going to be called Piss on Feet, Pisses on the Classics. Because we really want to pay tribute to the fantastic artists that we've had. Now in 2005 there was talk of a Christmas album. Is that something that you're going to pursue in the future? It's something that we want to pursue, but unfortunately uh, there has been a lot of other things that we've been trying to work on, uh, which includes our fourth album. Um, but the Christmas album is always in the front of our mind, trying to, you know, come up with the perfect songs you know, maybe it'll be an EP, maybe it'll be a full length, we don't know. But right now we're really concentrating on our fourth album. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about the urination celebration. Backtracking a little bit, how was this al or how was this concert planned ahead of time? There's a lot of planning, a lot of planning. Um, first we had to reserve our location, um, which we did, and that re reservation was lost. But luckily, we were still able to regain our reservation. Then the planning for the stage show, which was extensive. Uh, it included tomatoes, pudding in a bag taped to my buttocks. It took a lot of time and effort to get 
the bands together that played with us, the instruments ready, finely tuned, and then, I mean, our fan base, you know, really showed up. Really showed up for it. Tell us about the um, the cover song that you decided to uh, perform at the urination celebration. Well, <clears throat> when thinking about a, doing a cover song, one song and one song only came to mind, and that was "Tearing Up My Heart" by In Sync. It really speaks to everyone in this band in so many different levels that it was our way of giving back to the members of NSYNC what they gave us and so we remade the song in our own little piss on feet way and did any members of uh, NSYNC show up to the show? uh no um sent some invitations um Got some letters back saying that, you know, don't bother us. But I know that deep down, they, they felt the love. They felt how much we loved them. Now, there was one InSync member in particular that found that our cover of, uh, found that the cover of, oh shit, hang on, I'll redo that. <clears throat> Now there was one um, InSync member in particular that found the cover of Tearing Up My Heart to be offensive and really pushed for us not to ever do that song. Now, can you tell us a little bit about that? I thought it was a restraining order. Yeah, I messed it up. Okay, let's do it again. Now, there was one InSync member in particular that uh, filed a restraining order against all four members of the band. Can you tell us a little bit on the, uh, the backstory of that? Well, the, the member of InSync in question that you're talking about is um, Justin Timberlake, or you know his friends like me and call him JT. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's really simple. Um, I needed to get in contact with them about this cover and, um, you know, just went on some forums and found his cell phone number and, you know, gave him a call. Uh, he seemed a little upset that I called him, um, but, you know, I thought that would pass, you know, um, and so I continued to call him two, three times an hour and he just seemed really standoffish and you know tried to try to even get a few you know do the other guys to call and see if maybe they'd have better luck and you know and just all of a sudden in the mail we got served with papers that we were a restraining order against us so I'm not allowed to own a cell phone anymore or uh, use the internet but now many critics would say that the reason the new piss on feet CD hasn't surfaced yet is because of mama pigs trip to India to visit the Dalai Lama it was a big time in his life um, he visited his holiness a few years ago um, that's where he's pulling a lot of his strength and a lot of his, his, his imagery that he's writing into his songs because we all write songs. It's not just one person uh, and we all sing songs. It's not, there's not just one person that's the voice of Piss on Feet. We all are the voice of Piss on Feet. Just because I'm labeled as the front man doesn't mean that everybody else doesn't have their input and his input has become very spiritual um, he's writing a song right now called the cake monster which could be one of the most enlightening pieces that we'll ever have on an album another problem that came during the recording of the third CD was uh, 
baby pig's um, descent into drug use. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, definitely a dark time in the band. Um, he started with simple energy drinks, um, rock star, amp, what have you, and then progressively graduated to over-the-counter energy pills, uh, stackers, you know, five-hour five hour energy shots. And we really started to notice a problem when he was writing what he called his thesis that was to be made into a song. Well, unfortunately, since he hadn't slept in four days, he had continuously wrote a what had become 300 page song. And when we confronted him about the 300 page song just is not going to be able to make it on the album, he showed us what he had been writing and he had been writing complete gibberish. Um, HJQT, WPMZ, E, upside down Q, T. Um, and he, sorry, he got really upset, really upset to the point that we thought we needed to intervene and we fed his thesis to a homeless person on the corner of uh, Broadway and Clinton. Piss on Feet has survived many hardships and, you know, had a lot of good times. Hopefully the good times have outweighed the bad. If you could change one thing about the seven years that the band has been together, what would it be? Well, not all the stops on that one. Whew. I think that one of the things that I would change is... <clears throat> Hold on, I, I, I gotta think about this one. Yeah. Wait, should I, so should I go Rolling Stones? Now, Piss on Feet has endured hard times, and you've also been one of the most successful bands to ever be born out of a pigsty. If there was one thing that you could change about this band, what would it be? Because of our, you get me on this one, but because of how talented each one of the members of the band are, and because of how amazing the fanfare has been, and our sales, and everything, we're getting to a point where we can't move higher up anymore. I mean, we're just at a point where when you're the best, you're the best. Um, because as it stands right now, in most people's eyes, it's Rolling Stones, Chumbawamba, The Beatles, Aqua, Piss on Feet. Where do I go from there? Where does the band go from there? 